what's going on everybody it's matt sarmiento from sarmiento motorsports here with you and as promised i'm going to show you how let's put these bad boys on showed you how to do the front bumper bumper was pretty straightforward and easy these they just take a little more patience not too much but i'm going to show you the breakdown of taking the stock ones off right quick tools needed and then some of the tech tips on how to get these beasts on there on your brand new ride and then get that safety and stability and control all right i'm going to go over a couple of the tools and also the hardware as well. So we got our Nerf bar nets, monster pegs, the actual the actual peg that goes into the, the tube, all right? And I'm just using this for just for to show you. This one that has this collar actually goes on the brake pedal side. Okay, that way it clears the brake pedal. So there's a difference. There's a left and a right. Okay? Driver side or left side, I'm used to cars, thinking cars. Left side right side left side right side if you put it upside down no good either so it does have a way to go on there okay because you'd be dragging this thing really badly on the ground okay the bolts to bolt the monster pegs down and of course our front support that actually goes into where our motor mounts is to the frame and then the front of the nerf bars go in okay and i'm gonna show you some cool tips on how to get those guys in all right and last but not least so our tools of choice yes you could use cordless electric air or go 100 percent manual i'll show you a little bit of everything a little bit of each there's a half inch stubby three inch stubby whichever you pick you just use one of them a uh, cordless ratchet three inch ratchet but at least you would need a 10 millimeter socket that helps on a ratchet a 10 millimeter wrench okay if you have a breaker bar a 17 millimeter socket with an extension, a breaker bar. It doesn't it have, doesn't have to be Snap-on or DeWalt or whoever or Milwaukee. It could be Harbor Freight. It don't matter as long as it gets the job done. Um, but a nice, pretty fresh five millimeter Allen bit really helps, especially on an impact gun. If you do it manually, put some force into it, take off those those rear bolts. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. But if you use an impact gun, you give it a nice crackle, like a snap to it. Let me take it off. Okay. I'll show you all that coming up next, all right? All right, so we're on our brand new unit. Still haven't rode it yet. Got to put Nerf bars on, because I have made the mistake before of not having Nerf bars, so that is something I need for my for my knee. I, I had a bad accident one time, never again. So lesson learned, I'll take, I'll take the repercussions and lesson learned. Okay, taking off the stock, footy, foot pegs, and heel guards is rather straightforward and simple. Now I was saying as far as using a five millimeter Allen key, like on a three eighths drive socket, or if you have a half inch, but usually you can find a three eighths. If you have a, an impact gun, it helps out quite a bit. So you get like a more of a snap power to it. Okay, because you can strip these ones and definitely put some force on it. Push on it, and a little quick snap. Wasn't too bad, just a little quick snap. Just, just give it a touch with the gun, bound. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. You could use a 3 8 ratchet, put some good force on it, and give it a good twist. Don't, you know, you actually have to hold the ratchet head and twist. If you're just trying to put both hands on it, you are going to strip this every time. Nice to be able to reuse this because it doesn't tear up your boots. I have many torn up boots from it. Okay, that's off. If you want to take um, the heel guard off, you can. You would need some uh, Phillips, Phillips, like a number three Phillips, a number four Allen. I usually just leave it on there. No worries on that. I suggest if you use a breaker bar, use a nice long one. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about as far as holding the ratchet. Hold it with your dominant hand, right? Or breaker bar, and give it a nice push down. Simple, very simple. And if you have an extension, you've got plenty of reach on it. There we go. If you use an impact gun, it could slip, so if you break them loose first, it's a lot easier. Not too big of it, not too big of a deal. And literally, now it's broke loose, comes right out of my hand. The bolts are different lengths, okay? The bolts for the uh, brake pedal side on the right are longer. So don't mix up your bolts, keep them side for side. They are that way for a reason. And as I had said earlier, also to the, uh, the pegs that, that receive the nerf bars the new pegs that you put on that receive the nerf bars they are sized and again 
There's one for the right and one for the left. I'm gonna show you that. All right, and last bolts out. Simple, three bolts, done. Quick and easy, right here. Okay, so just took off the right, the right side. It's the same procedure. Take off your two big bolts and obviously a small hanger bolt. Okay, same way I did on the left side, no biggie. Um, also, this would be a good time to loosen this bolt. Felt that the camera angle is better on this side. I already did it on the other side, but you want to take this bolt out. So that's where the uh, front bracket is going to get a good hold of it. Don't take both motor mount bolts out, just the one, okay? I'm going to use a 14 millimeter socket. Nice and quick. The Dewalt made fast work of that. If you're using hand tools, not a problem. This isn't that big, you know, that hard. Take that guy out. And I usually, first, I just like to set my bolts right there. Again, don't mix up these guys right here, okay? Because they are different lengths. The other side, they're a little bit shorter. These ones are longer, okay, guys? I'm gonna show you how to put those on next. Okay, so now we're gonna install our peg. So this is the actual peg that goes now into the frame. So the Nerf bar will go into. Don't put it like this, because it will be dragging the ground. Okay? This way. And you will you can tell if you put it that way, it'll never line up over here. I have heard some comments online like, man, I can't get the this to line up there in the back. And I'm pretty sure nine out of ten is because this is on upside down. Like I said before, these bolts are different lengths. So keep them side to side. Good tech tip. Or if not, uh, if your workspace, you know, is a little more crowded, maybe use a magnet bowl. Keep two magnet bowls, one side for side, okay? Put bolts in. Start on my hand, okay? Don't start with the impact gun because you wouldn't want to strip them. That would be terrible. Or if you tighten them by hand, that's fine too. Have a shorter extension with our 17 millimeter. Nice and tight, our dual stubby 12 bolt fantastic this would be a good time now also too as i said before stick that bolt out and just take this the front mount now and just give it a little slide on in all right that's it simple okay just let it lay there for now get the other side lined up so you might have to walk back and forth maybe once or twice get it lined up and you'll be good to go okay now here's our right side peg again is the right side because it has these collars are welded on it for spacing for the brake pedal. If you put it the other way around, the thing be way too close and it's just not gonna work right. And even the stock ones are that way too. They actually have a space to it. So install your bolts right on through. Start them by hand like so. Get a couple threads in. Okay, we'll take the impact gun or however you're doing it. If you're doing it by hand or with the impact gun. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're busting out like a, you know, 18 volt Milwaukee or a Dewalt half inch, you might want to be a little easier on it. This isn't 12. You can go on it. You can, you know, hang on it a little bit longer. Now, on the other side, we had just already installed, slid our bracket in, and I left it loose. You want to take your bolt and just easy just by hand. I already did it to the other side. Leave it by hand and leave it loose. Don't tighten it yet. You want to put your Nerf bars on first and that we have some, some wiggle room in there. All right, so that way you can wiggle on. And don't go beating your Nerf bars on with a sledgehammer or something like that. I'll show you something a little bit easier on how to do that. Okay, another tech tip. A much easier way is to when you get them on and then how to secure them on better, okay? okay. Now we're to the point we're gonna put our Nerf bar on. But what I would recommend, just make sure there's no debris on it. Clean it with a clean shop rag right quick. And Confucius tip. Does that have to be white lithium grease? But just get a little bit of grease and just put a little gentle dab of grease on there. And it will slide on a million times easier. Not saying it doesn't, but a million times easier. And I, I always feel like every Nerf bar, they always like, to, you know, they don't always go on perfectly straight. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And if they don't, you know, don't fight it. Just work with it. Slide her on. Remember, we left the front loose on purpose. That way we got some wiggle room. And by hand. That's it. Simple. Done. Don't worry about slamming that thing. Don't worry about beating it to death. And look, by hand, I can actually lift this guy up. Simple. If you have to give it some love, <laughs> and I say it has to be a snap on one, this is what I got, okay? Because I use this a lot on engine stuff. 
use a good plastic or rubber mallet if you, if you actually have to give it a little love tap don't hit it crazy hard because remember then it starts to mess up your powder coat it may not mar it but that's a spot where you actually start to actually crack it underneath your powder coat so if you can avoid that try to avoid that and that way your finish stays you know lasting longer better for a long time we'll go over to the other side all right doing the same thing i already cleaned cleaned the tubes all right all ends i already gave it a little bit of grease next put these beauties on and what a difference how much it fills in as far as on those wheels my gosh okay remember like i said left the front ones loose just get a little so i just pushed it in with my hand just get a little twist in there you go okay we are gonna give this one a little a little hair of love and there we go no more okay we don't want to beat up our nerf bars didn't mar nothing in fact come take a look the powder coat's not cracking i didn't hit it very hard I just give it a couple little love taps, nothing crazy. But again, with a good plastic or rubber hammer, just a little love tap, that's it. I'm gonna show you an easier way how to, if you wanna get these guys on snugger, a much easier way. And that's for any Nerf, right? Here's the tech tip of the million dollar century. This I've heard many times before, I'm like, bro, how do you get this up to there? I've heard that a lot, like, bro, like, how do you do that? I've never had really an issue doing it. Maybe it's some of the things I do. I've heard many, many comments like the bolt of doom and other things. I'm gonna show you how I do it. And definitely, obviously, you know, make sure the machine is cool because you know your hand has to be around the exhaust, all that good stuff. I need to just take my bolt, put on my impact gun, okay? Make sure you're going the right way. <laughs> I usually take my thumb, okay, from up top, just grab it with my other hand and just give it a squeeze. done just a little quick i mean i already saw it threading in because i'm watching over the top it's already threading in i just give it a finish it off with the impact gun nothing crazy wasn't strenuous i just worked with it but again also too i left the front loose so if you leave the front loose now we have some you have some you know flex play there you can flex a little bit the actual the nerf bars can actually rotate around this and i'm gonna show you how to finish securing this guy here i'm gonna go do the, the same on the other side okay so we're on the other side all right, I was just checking my gun, make sure I'm going the right way. You don't want to be over there trying to put it on as backwards. Same thing, so now you use your other hand, so you use your right hand, right? Thumb over the top of the bracket, and you just give it a squeeze, right? Not that big of a deal. I'm no power lifter. Anymore. Done. Simple. And if anything, check it by hand after you're done. Simple, simple. Remember, these are loose in the front, so we're going to tighten those up now, okay? You don't have to go ham on it. Remember, it's aluminum. So don't go over there with, you know, the Rambo gun or something like that, you know, the three-quarter inch air gun. This is aluminum. It doesn't have to be super tight, okay? I mean, it has to be tight, but not ridiculous because it will strip the frame, okay? Going for the front, put your 14 millimeter socket on your 3 h drive. Or if you're doing it by hand, I do it on, by hand on the other side. Couple of taps. Ain't going no more. Done. You don't have to just keep on hammering on it. It's there. She ain't coming out. All right, so those, for those of you without power tools, which is fine, doesn't matter, you can do all this by hand. Three inch ratchet, it's about eight inch extension, 14 millimeter on there, okay? You don't have to try and arm wrestle this thing. You're gonna try to kill somebody for it. Put it on, go by the feel, all right? You don't have to pull out a torque wrench. I mean, if you want to, you can. That's fine, she's getting tight done okay give her a couple little ugga duggas doesn't cr nothing crazy i didn't stand on there i wasn't trying to pull pull to death you need a shorter ratchet you want to put some more power on it great this is my go-to not a problem quick and simple we're almost done in like less than 10 minutes right. so here's the next tip how do you get these nerf bars to be tighter you know how are they you get them always snugged in i always everybody always asks me that so the easiest thing to do is they put the machine in gear lift it up or use the parking brake <laughs> lift it up using this awesome new bumper that actually has good handholds you definitely want to grab the machine pick it up put it on your knee and give it a push up okay and if you have like a rubber mat or something like that underneath which i have put that there that way you know you're not messing up your grab bar rest her on back let her be now here is where the tip 
the million dollar tip is about to come in. So take a look at this. We have this beautiful machine that I scratch on it. That's just from, you know, lifting on and off the dyno. <laughs> so I haven't rode this thing yet, for sure. Everybody has one of these, right? What is that? A ratchet strap. Okay. Poor folks at Rafi are like, no, this man, he did not. That's okay. Take the ratchet strap hook, put it in one of the where the buckles would go for the Nerf bar nets, right? Watch and learn. As long as you keep the hook in there. I put on a lot of Nerf bars in my life, right? Look at the gap distance. If that doesn't bother you, not a problem. If you want to be snug, instead of beating it, you know, a hammer. There we go. And maybe like that one, might have to give it a little, just a little, little vibration with the hammer. Very light. Well, how about them apples? Look at there, so there you go. So that guy right there is beautiful. Now, they did add bolts to that. For those that don't mind drilling into it, not a problem. This is actually an easy time to do that now, especially when it's lifted up, because then, one, you're not on your, you know, on your hands and knees. And this is a quick, easy process. And we'll we'll go on a high speed and we'll show you how that's done. All right, safety glasses, because we're drilling. Give yourself a nice little center punch. Doesn't have to be a gigantic hammer. Whatever hammer, it could be a claw hammer. You want to take it? I know, this is this is the part that, that's a little scary. Give a little, a little love tap underneath, all right? This is optional. You do not have to do this. Maybe if you want to just do one, that's fine. I always do it to all my Nerf bars. I mean, I'm like whatever, I know how to do it. It's not a big deal for me, so all good. Now I get some drill bits. Okay, you wanna start with like about an eighth inch drill bit, okay? As a pilot, I mean, trying to force it. I mean, going through the aluminum is easy. When you hit the steel part, that gets a little tougher. And just try to keep it straight, that's all. And it actually goes by pretty quick. Have a nice sharp drill bit. Be patient, don't rush it. Okay, so we just finished with our eighth inch bit. Now we're gonna go a quarter. In millimeters, it comes out to 6.4 millimeters. Uh, 15, 16 is like 5.9. I usually just go with the, with the uh, quarter and just go for it. All right, so here we go. Let's wrap this piece up. All right, all our holes are drilled, ready to go. I personally, you know, some people like to put them this way. Kind of hate when the, the, the end of the stud's sticking out. I usually like to jump from the top under. It depends on whichever way you want to go. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. Put your bolts in, put the nuts on, torque them down. So we got our, all our bolts in there now. Now, moment of truth. We can release this beast. Look at that. Snug as a glove. See that? All everything snugged in. Remember? Don't forget to, you know, clean up your metal shavings afterwards because there is quite a bit of metal shavings down there. I promise you. <laughs> all right. So all our hardware's on. We just have, well, 90% of our hardware's on. We're going to say the best for last. Nerf bar nets. I honestly like the factory ones that they come with. Some people have different options where they have, you know, the boot catchers or whatnot. Whatever your preference is. I try to stay more on the pegs. To each is his own. But a big common question is, Okay, I've never put a set of Nerf bars on. What do I, where do I start with as far as the nets? Well, look at all your hardware. So the wrap, all the uh, buckles for the netting is already there. The, the nets do not go through the pegs. I've seen other, other brands where they do. Eh, not personally my favorite, but it does work. Which ones are which? Well, with these, they're actually all the same. Easy, quick, simple, easy. And well, made right here in the USA. Simple. So I'm gonna go for putting these guys on. We'll show you some of that weaving technique. All right. So my recommendation is probably put your machine back down. I mean, me, I could kind of get under here no problem. 
Everybody's different. You gotta put on a stand, whatever. Like I said, I'm not exactly a very tall guy. Anyway, so this fits me easily. So, here's your Nerf bar nets. Get the longer end, which is gonna go towards the front. Shorter end is gonna go towards the back. It all makes sense, literally. Once you go, I don't know, let me get a couple of them out of the way. Got like, they look like a bunch of uh, weeds going through, you know, like seaweed, you know, floating around at first. So sometimes it can be a little tricky. I you just tend to just to go ahead and just, you go from the top all the way to the bottom. Don't worry about the middle one yet, okay? The middle one is how you lock it in, okay? You actually be going through the middle one and then back to the top, okay? And I've seen some folks where they like to do it the other way where the, uh, all the netting is coming out the, the top, whatever your preference is, this is my normal preference. I'm okay with the nets dragging a little bit on the ground. I think you'd actually do pretty good. So take it away from the top, let's go through, go through, and then that way you don't have a bunch of Nerf bar nets all over the place, you know? Like a, it's like a spider, you know, like all over, hanging, grabbing everything. So as long as you put them somewhere, Especially where they're supposed to start off makes life easier so so we could probably get like a camera angle here see we're going from the from the very top all the way to the very bottom now here's the next crucial step you come come around right through in the middle and like an og like helmet strap or seat belt literally that's it leave it loose okay that way you could adjust it okay so you get you feed it some slack take some away however okay same thing, you can literally just go and just do them all exactly like that. You're done. If it helps, maybe use some pliers. No problem, maybe like some curved needle nose pliers. That might help. Um, and I've also seen sometimes where they, uh, you know, because obviously they melt, you know, the ends of these. If you have to, you know, clip them just a little bit with your pliers, you can, but I mean, usually these go on pretty easy. I mean, I've put on Nerf bars for Oh man, I think almost every manufacturer you could think of. Um, for a long time, they used to run the GYTRs. Those are actually pretty sturdy Nerf bars, but they didn't offer the monster peg feature like the RAS. And I gotta tell you, once you go with those monster pegs, it's like, wow, that is, that's a game changer. There's no way around it. So literally quick, simple, easy. And I mean, there's people that could do this way faster than me. I haven't even got my gloves on, so they're not super hard. Like I said, leave it loose. Don't tighten it. You you make all your adjustments at the end. And also, too, you want to get on it, too. Um, and maybe get a feel for it. Like, you know, how, how tight the nets are. Because you can make the nets so tight that you cannot put your foot under the shifter. Me, personally, I, I'm not a fan of that. I'd rather have them a little loose. But not too loose. Like, so loose like that, you know, your toe gets stuck on the ends of them. Um, That's also another thing, too. So... I mean, I feel like mediocre is good, you know, or it's so loose or so loose where I've seen this happen where the, the netting go over the brake pedal and then somebody steps on this and then it gets stuck on there. So it's got to be a little bit of a combination of both. So I preferably on my brake side, I prefer to be a little bit tighter, but then on my shifter side, a little bit looser. That's just preference. You know, everybody's different and also trying to keep it straight. That's always you know a little easier said than done. But hey, you know, it all... Works out in the long run. Almost there. And there we go. You gotta have a little bit of flex to it. It can't be too tight either. There you go. And hey, not bad on the first a uh, first attempt, pretty straight. And technically, I can actually adjust these a little bit more, a little bit forward. But you know, they will stretch. They will. There's some things that sometimes you gotta adjust them. But I mean, for the most part, usually I put them on and run them with it, and they they go and they're great. And I I can't think it was the last time I ever adjusted my other ones since I put them on. That's been like over a year ago. So they've been good to me. So actually, I think they've been on there longer than that. Okay. There we go. A couple little quick tweaks. And it's literally as simple. If you need to tweak it, you push in. You push in the extra a little bit and pull out the front. One-handed. Done. Okay. Again, starting the back. Really long ends forward, short ends back. And as I was saying before, just slide them right through the buckles, right? That way you don't have a million, you know, straps of Nerf bar. And, and I've seen 
Some people, they don't want them to hang or whatever. You could uh, zip tie them. And I have seen that to be pretty ingenious. I've seen sometimes them being riveted. Whatever works for you. I mean, you can be creative with it. It's all good. They're, they're yours. I mean, whatever suits you well. Um, on this back one, you do actually come in a little bit tighter with, with these. And again, thankfully, they're easy to adjust. Like, super easy. Oh my gosh, like I said, I'm doing this in gloves. So, without gloves, I'm pretty sure I could do it like faster. <laughs> Amazingly faster. Man, I'm looking at all the stock stuff on this machine. Oh my gosh, there's a lot in there. And we are going to be going through a lot of the uh, race application things to do. And also things that are also, you know, worthy to keep too. But also, you know, what helps keep your machine more bulletproof but definitely good front bumper good nerf bars it goes i'm talking about a long long ways you know especially to help you know prevent injuries or reduce them as much as possible your bumper is a huge help and protection to your machine your nerf bars are protection for yourself as well and also the foot you know your footing i mean like i i, I you know enjoy motocross i'm definitely not you know pro or anything like that not even close you know i'm amateur rider i enjoy it i do you know i've been told i do well for for you know what i know and at my my level and age and whatnot and and i'm happy with that and and i, I usually feel very good about you know my abilities for what i could do and uh you know but also keep it you know keep it safe and fun and that's the biggest thing at least backwards i'm not gonna deny it Sometimes you got to kind of like give them a little push in and then suck it on through with the other one. When you do, you'll feel it come right on in. So I think I have one back one here that could probably use a little, oh, never mind. I say a little trim, but you kind of help. You suck it in with the other one. So when you get it a pull in, it pulls the other side through. It was nice, these big buckles. You can actually see, like you can see through them well. So you can see the work that you're doing. It's by feel too. So you know it, feels right, goes good. Go with your instincts. Make it neat, make it nice. But what a difference from the factory hardware. I'm not saying the factory hardware is, you know, trash or anything like that. And a lot of wood guys that use them, you know, a lot of them, they don't prefer having, you know, uh, nerf bars in the front for if they, you know, get stuck in a trail or whatever they could actually well they could fred flintstone it in reverse <laughs> me personally no, i'm good on that i'm i'm good i uh i like my full nerf bars i love my rats i mean man they are some beauties on there so there you go like a baseball catching glove legitimately i usually prefer these bottom ones to be a little bit tighter i usually just try to go with the lines so to speak there we go. And again, also too, this depends also on your on your shoe size too, you know. But don't pull this in too much this way. That way, you know, you have some catching here for your feet. So obviously if you get in that far. But I mean, really, generally, you know, you actually want to be as you're riding in here. And as you've noticed, I've left the pegs off. I have installed these things with the pegs on and literally have caught my forearm on them suckers. And whoo, they will let you know they are sharp. Let's go over to the other side. All right, we're getting ready for the other side. Same thing, do it all over again. Short sides in the back, long sides in the front. Here we go. All right, so the nets are on, loving the way they came out, fantastic. Took me six minutes to do, literally, like on time, I wasn't even trying to rush. Like the way they came out, and uh, easy to make some little adjustments if you want to. Always give a nice push in, make sure they got catch good, nothing's coming loose. Done, so six and six is 12. Honestly, 
probably just took me about a good 35, 40 minutes with drilling the, uh, the bolts. I mean, some people don't like to drill the bolts. I would at least recommend at least doing the, these ones here. But obviously, if you put the bolts in, then they don't rattle. They don't do nothing. I mean, they are on there like white on rice, legit. Now, like I said, we say the best for last. All right. Last but not least, the, least the wrap monster pegs. That is the crowning jewel here to finish these amazing Nerf bars off. And I really got to thank Graph Racing a lot. I mean, the hardware, the quality of the hardware is fantastic. So they give you 10 millimeter bolts, 10 millimeter wrench, 10 millimeter ratchet, or impact driver, whatever works good for you. Electric ratchet, regular ratchet. I always put these in first loosely. Okay. Give, you know, the bolt before a little spin on. As it comes to the end, you actually gotta give them sometimes a little pinch, you know, some shipping and all that stuff, whatever. They're not like, you know, perfectly, perfectly straight. But once you bolt them on, they all straighten up. I've never had them not straighten up. Like, it was the next best thing to slice bread, literally. Oh man, look at those beauties right there. And again, now, now putting them on last, now you can see why it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, you could do the, the nets, you know, first or you know you can put the pegs on first but if you do the nets first before the pegs it's a lot easier okay go for it use your box end of your wrench just to hold that's it done done you don't have to over torque them what the, what the ratchet's gonna give me And just check them one more time. Oh, beautiful. Love it. Go to the other side. All right. We're going to repeat the same process on our install here. And it's easier also, too, if you have all your hardware in hand. I always just start at the end. Slide one bolt in. Give a little pinch with the thumb. And you will see everything coming together. And literally a work of art. I'm telling you, these guys, they know what the deal is when it comes to motocross, TT, you name it. Maybe it has to do with the ATV. Right, they, they've been around. They know what's up, and man, their products are, well, definitely a plus. Those things are looking sweet. Cannot wait to go out and rip on this thing. Now, I'm ready for ripping. Okay. Like Fine-tuned machine. Now they're all straightened up. I mean, I'm talking about... Undertaken, so saving the best for last. No need to over torque it, that's what the uh, tool is going to give me. And I mean, and then even laser printed right here at the end, wrath. But I mean, do check them things out. Like, like I said before, now they're on the machine, they go flat, they start to flare right here. I can feel that already. I can have my eyes closed, I already know it. This is usually, especially this is zone I'm in a lot. And when you really got to dig deep, I mean, I'm talking about like you're really going for it or you're starting to get, you know, a little bit on the crazier side. I mean, they give you, they give you all of it all the way to the end. So no doubt. I mean, fantastic, beautiful product. Cannot think Wrath Racing enough. Amazing products. Oh man, the powder cone thing is just top notch. From bumper, Nerf bars. I mean, man, this thing is sweet. There's no way around that. Oh. I mean, this is showroom quality and more. They should offer this from factory. I'm starting to think. No, but the, uh, they have the GYTR series and they leave it up to the, uh, you know, to the user of what they wanna, wanna use in. But I mean, man, you with the 20s on, with the factory tires, I mean, look how much, look how well 
the protection is that it's gonna be very hard for something to get in between the tire and the nerf bar especially another racer's tire even when you go to the um to your race tires like with 18s 18s in the back 20s in the front i mean it's it's really you know game changer and uh and fantastic but definitely definitely i mean that right there the footing is is on point no doubt and the bumpers definitely top notch no doubt and there we are i think we're pretty much about ready to go out and ride and have some fun on this thing thanks for watching as always